join me as I cruise from Bradford Wharf to Dundas Aqueduct. The scenery is stunning and the two neoclassical aqueducts are really something else. I'll also get a bit wet. Quite a big sill on this lot. Well, we've just come out of Bradford upon Avon Lock and helped through by some very good lockies. The lockies always seem to be on duty there, apart from on Wednesdays. Um, but it bears a question. And the question is, who invented locks? Was it A, Alistair Locke? Was it B, James Brindley? Was it C, Leonardo da Vinci? Or was it D, the Chinese? And I shall tell you before the end of the video. There are good moorings next to the 14th century tithe barn. And this is well worth a look. The Cruck roof is absolutely fantastic. It was built around 1330. Farmers, at the time, had to provide the church with 10% of their yield, and the tithe barns were where the crops were stored. Mooring in and around Bradford is always busy. A clay pit was dug near Bradford Wharf to line the canal. A vast number of fossils were excavated from the site, dating to the Jurassic period. Funny to think that this was the seabed 165 million years ago. Bradford Swing Bridge is usually open and is electronically operated only by the truck drivers who use it. If you go back two and a half years to episode four, you'll notice that I happened across the Diggle Blues Festival, a four-day free festival on the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. Well, I've been contacted by David Wood, the event organiser, to say that, post-Covid, the festival is running again this year. So, if you like the blues, then why not take a boat trip to Diggle between June the 16th and 19th? I'll link it in the description box. Sadly, I won't be able to be there this year. Another Dutch sailing barge. And the trader, the floating baker. I like the way she's moored against the fence that has no mooring signs written against it. <laughs> See, no one gives a shit on this canal. Honestly, the lo most laid-back canal I've ever come across. It really is. I mean, marinas that don't sell diesel, marinas that haven't got any oil. It's like, why? <laughs> it's weird. Anyway, that's my take on it. <laughs> Avon Cliff is coming up, and I'm looking for the water point. OK, there it is.
Now. That's powerful. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I needed a shower. This is the most powerful water point you will ever come across. You have been warned. Having had an impromptu soaking, it's a sharp 90 degrees onto the Avoncliff aqueduct. Just been over a river and a railway line. Loads and loads of these pilt boxes along this canal as well. I mean, you know, like the Germans were going to invade on a canal boat. The pillboxes were added all the way along the Kennet and Avon in 1940, a secondary line of defence in case of German invasion. This anti-tank stop line ran from Taunton in the west, along the Kennet and Avon Canal to Reading, and then to the south of London, as far as the Kent coast. I'm hanging back, waiting for a holiday boat to come through the pinch point. And I've caught up with another holiday boat looking for a mooring. I did a rough calculation, and I reckon there are about 90 holiday boats operating in the 22 miles between Devizes and Bath. Busy. What will we do without Satnav? Some CRT moorings on the offside at Murr Hill. Stone was quarried at Murr Hill from 1803. A tramway connected the quarry to the dock here where the stone was transported to Bath and Bristol. The quarry shut in the 1930s. Tsitsikama? Is that how it's pronounced? I think it must be South African. Another ex-oil rig lifeboat. There seem to be a few on this canal.
pedal power. I bet that's hard work. Another 90 degree turn which will take us on to the stunning Dundas Aqueduct. Designed by John Rennie the Elder, it carries the canal over the River Avon and the railway. As we cross, we'll be leaving Wiltshire and heading into Somerset. The old toll building can be seen ahead. Now, I did photograph Dundas Aqueduct from river level. It is an engineering and architectural masterpiece. But, like a right numpty, I seem to have lost the images. I will, though, go back and film it at some point. I promise. I emerge into a basin, the junction with the Somerset Coal Canal, which is on the left and the K&A continues off to the right. Did you get the answer to the lock question? Actually, it was a bit of a trick question because in the first century the Chinese started using flash locks. Flash locks are uh, like doorways in, in, in dams across rivers. Um, and it was in about uh, 1100 AD that they started using pound locks, which is basically the system we use now. So you have a, a pound of water and then, um, you know, two lock gates uh, separated so that you can raise and lower the levels. However, it was actually Leonardo da Vinci who invented the mitre lock which is, you know, the chevron lock as we know it today. Mitre gates are actually uh, capable of withstanding an enormous amount of water pressure compared to just a flat gate, um, which is why we continue to use them today. As usual, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button, that would really help my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe 
and hit the notification bell so that you see when I upload new videos. Also, please share on your social media. Uh, that will help my channel an awful lot too. OK, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> ha.